Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Advanced 3, part of Part 3 in Module 1, and it's the last lesson for this part, so congratulations on making it this far. We're going to write a function called select. Given an array and an object, select returns a new object whose properties are those in the given object and whose keys are present in the given array. Note, if the keys are present in the given array but are not in the given object, it should ignore them. It does not modify the past in object. So, essentially, the plan here is we're going to create a new object, iterate over the array of keys, check to see if each individual key is a valid key within the input object, and if it is, assign the entire property or set the property on the new object. So let's pseudocode that out just so we have an idea of what's about to happen. Create a result object, return the result object, iterate over the array if current key is present in input object, which we can do by checking to see if it's undefined. Um, add property uh, to result object. Or we should say add input objects property to result object. So uh, don't worry if this took you a lot longer or if you weren't able to figure that out that quickly. A lot of these problems are way easier in retrospect. So variable result is equal to an empty object. We're going to return the result at the end. We're going to iterate over the array using a for loop. This one's going to go over the entire length of the array. So i is equal to 0, i is less than the array length. I'm going to splice into the pseudocode because this one will be a little bit easier if you have a whole representation at the end. So if the current key is present in the input object, so the input object is obj, the current key is essentially array at i. If that's equal to undefined, then it's not present in the object. So we want the opposite. We want if it's not equal to undefined. If it's not equal to undefined, then we add the input object's property to the result object. So result at the current key is going to be equal to the current key's value within our input object, which is just this expression right there. As we go through all of the keys in the array, we'll check to see if any of those keys are present in the object. If they are, meaning that the value is not equal to undefined, we're going to add that property to the result object. After we finish iterating over the array, we know we've done everything we need to, so we'll run the tests. Oh, it should return an object. Array is not defined. Oh boy. Ah, yeah, it totally isn't. So we are not talking about an array. We're talking about R. So we're going to need to go through and replace. Uh, let's look at the error real quick. So uh, array is not defined. Stack trace in select line 6. So we jump to line 6, and let's undo that real quick. Jump to line 6, and we see, OK, so array is not defined. What that means is that <clears throat> it tried to find a variable or a parameter called array, and it can't find one. So we look to see, hey, did we create a variable called array? No, we just have one called result. We look at our parameters list and we identify that r is what they're calling the array rather than the full name array. So not to worry. We'll go ahead and exchange everywhere we wrote array for arr because that's what the parameter is called. Come down here and run the tests, and we're in good shape. So excellent work. Thanks for watching these videos, and we'll see you in the next one.